Well, hello and welcome. Hey, if you know who Douglas Adams is, you already know the answer to this question. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about finding the area of this beautiful red square right here. Here are the details. This is a regular hexagon. The side lengths are 28. Got a semicircle right here. Another semicircle right here if you connected HG for Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. We'd have a semicircle there. Where these two semicircles intersect creates a link that is the diagonal of this little red square whose area we must find. All right, now go ahead and try it. You probably already know the answer if you're, well, a fan of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy or any of the other Douglas Adams works, but you know how to get it? So go ahead and pause the video, try it, see what you got. I'm going to go ahead and dive into it right now. I'd love for you to join me. There's lots of ways to solve this. I came up with two. Maybe you've got a different one. I'd really love to hear from you if you do. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and dive in. So I think for this one, it's going to be really important to start off with what it is we're trying to find. We're trying to find that area. So we're going to try to find a dimension of that square. And I think the easiest one to find is going to be the diagonal of that square, those two intersections of the semicircle. So if I start with a small semicircle and I take a radius on the top and one on the bottom, I've got, well, a little sector. So if I can figure that angle out, I can figure out what the diagonal is. So let's zoom in on that little square because if I know the diagonal, call those vertices, the corners A, B, C, D, if I know the distance of A, C, I can figure out the area of the square. Here's how, right? I know that if I take any side length like B, C, and I square it, well, that's the area of the square. I also know that with this diagonal, I have triangle ABC, and it's a right triangle, so the Pythagorean theorem is true. The hypotenuse squared is equal to the side length squared. However, in this case, the side lengths are equal, so I'm going to go ahead and substitute, and BC squared plus BC squared is 2BC squared. Now, check this out. BC squared is the area, so if I divide this by 2, I got BC squared equals AC squared divided by 2. So, since this is the area, that also is the area, so the area is AC squared divided by 2. So, if I can find this diagonal, square it, divide by 2, I've got the area. So, I'm going to take my little formula I found. I'm going to tuck it up in the corner over there, put a little heart around it because we love math. Also, take a little picture of what it is we're trying to find just to keep us, you know, on the straight and narrow here, and let's go ahead and dive in. This semicircle's radius is 14 because the side length is 28, right? So 14 here and 14 here, and each of these radii is also 14. Now, because it's a regular hexagon, I've got 120 degrees for all of the interior angles, and so if I connect those two right there, it makes a 90-degree angle there and a 30-degree angle there. I can drop the perpendicular bisector right here, and I've got a 30, 60, 90. Well, those are just fantastic triangles because half of the short side, which is this over here, sorry, the short side is half of the hypotenuse. So this hypotenuse of 28, half of it is the short side 14. Whatever that is, multiply it by the root the square root of 3, and you get the long side. So we'd have the same exact situation down over here, right? All right, now, if I connect this to this, watch what happens. Well, quite a happy coincidence right there. Look at that. Now I've got 14, 14 here. Now what I have is I've got a 30, 60, 90 here as well. And it's going to turn out each of these is going to be 7 root 3 as well. In fact, if you didn't see that right away, see this 30 right here? Here's the hypotenuse. Well, the short side would here would be 7, and this would be 7 times the square root of 3. Since these two together make 14 root 3, they both must be 7 root 3. So what I've got right here is I've got this distance from here to here is 7 root 3. Now let me give you a preview of why that's going to be important. See this triangle right here? If I can find its base, or I can find this distance right here, then I can figure out this angle. If I double it, I've got my sector angle, and then I can figure out that diagonal. Oh, that's pretty cool, right? So, let's go ahead and explore this right here. We're going to see if we can figure out that distance right there. All right, so now, if I connect H to this other vertex all the way over here, turns out this is going to be an equilateral triangle right here. So I've got a 14 here. This is 14. And they all turn out to be 14 and 60, 60, and 60. Pretty cool. So I can drop down a... Well, let's zoom in right here. I'll show you so it's not so cluttered. If I zoom in, I can drop down a perpendicular line to this base right here. And I've got a... Uh, this is 60 and this is 60 because these are 120 and that makes that 30 up at the top. So 
hypotenuse is 14, short side 7, height 7 root 3. That 7 right there is really important because the whole thing is 28, which gives me a distance of 21 from here to here. Since this is all squared up, I have a distance of 21 there to there. Also, ah, now look at that, 21 and 14. So I've got my beautiful little triangle right here, and I think I've got enough to figure it out now. So 21 plus 14 is, of course, 35, and I've got my angle. So if I try to solve for that, I can use just tangent opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of the angle is 7 root 3 over 35. So the angle would be the arc tangent of 7 root 3 over 35. I'm not going to go ahead and figure out what that is yet. I'm going to tuck that away and come back to it in a minute. But just so we know where that fits, that each one of those angles is theta. So together they make 2 theta. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this shape again right here. So I know I've got 14. I called the top A, the bottom C. We're looking for AC, and I know that 2 theta would be 2 times arc tangent of 7 root 3 divided by 35. I've got that side as 14, so I can use cosine rule. Man, look at that. Now, in this case, because this is my angle, that will be called a. So I'm going to say AC squared, and what we're looking for is AC squared divided by 2. So if I take this thing right here, divide both sides by 2, gives me my area. So let's go ahead and write that out. Here's what it looks like, right? AC squared divided by 2. So B, B and C are both 14. 2 theta is 2 arc tangent 7 root 3 over 35. So if we plug everything in, it's a little bit of calculator work. Not too bad, though. You end up with... 42. How sweet is that? Man, I gotta tell you, that really made me smile when I saw the answer was 42. Hey, I hope you loved this question. If you did, do what all the cool kids are doing. Like, subscribe, share, comment, all that stuff. Uh, if you'd like to use this in your classroom or other kinds of problems like that, I've got a bunch of free ones on my sub stack. i got a weekly problem I post there. My website's got all kinds of goodies for teachers as well. And I've got a Teachers Pay Teachers account that I'd encourage you to check out. In the meantime, Hope you really enjoyed this, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.